When people are talking about doing peace work and humanitarian work, it's not a day's job. So anyone who comes into doing this kind of work and think that it's nine to five and I can shut it down and go home, that place is not for you. Because you live, you breathe, you think it. I was 17 when the war started in Liberia and it's difficult to talk about the movement without talking about my socialization. We grew up with a strong sense of community. We were children of the community. So I have no understanding of religious indifference or religious intolerance or ethnic difference and then the war came. That war came and shattered everything because all of a sudden you came from this place where from birth till 17 you were told you were all one. And then at 17 you're being told you can interact with that ethnic group of these group of people. Living through the war, that anger I told myself I had to channel into something positive, something with it. And I met this group of Sierra Leone refugee women who told me, you know, women can make a difference. I never, I mean, that message was something that was far-fetched for me. We were raped. The ones who were raped, the women were raped, were abused, and we suffer a lot. So how can we be the one making changes when we're not on the table? It took two years to get that group together, bringing them together, and asking simple questions like, if the fire gun in this room right now, can the bullet pick out a Christian and leave a Muslim? Can the bullet pick and choose? Those simple questions really brought us to the place where we decided we need to work together because we are the ones being impacted. When you personalize a movement, when you make people to feel that there's nothing that is impacting you that I will not care about, there's no way you ask them to follow you that they will go. And the, the declared definition of that is that the personal is also political. You cannot do a political action and step away from the personal in people's lives. When I won the Nobel Peace Prize, they were asking me, what do you want your legacy to be? So I was like, no, oh, I won the Nobel Peace Prize. Isn't that legacy enough? And everyone was like, no, no, no. When you win the prize at 39, you can't retire. You have to keep working. So Desmond Tutu called me like that same night and said, have you heard about this gem? Yes. Well, I'm going to recommend that you become one of the board members. And I was like, is Desmond Tutu? How many times do you get Desmond Tutu to tell you, come and do this? I agreed to do it and it's life changing. It's, it's humbling. It keeps my feet planted because doing this gem, you recognize that the struggle of young people in Africa is the same as the struggle of young people in Europe and America. Why should a child be born in this country and still talk about hunger and, and in, 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 a, in a free world? You know, it's, it, it tours at your heart. So that's, that's the other challenge. But then also, the success for me is that these young people are looking at everyday people like myself, telling them their stories and saying, I too can be somebody. You start to do this work and the world makes you, or the world tells everyone else in the world that if you do this, then you solve this problem. But if you do this, you have to remember that there are other problems. So working with women and children is not just trying to bust a myth. It's actually dealing with people and understanding that when you tackle one problem, it's all internal. And that's the